You can Google how to create a YouTube video. You can Google how to start an Instagram account. You can Google everything. But what you can't Google is you can't Google what's going on in your heart. Mm. That's, that's where I tap into. So if, if, if you run a business mm -hmm. or are thinking about running a business and you feel that, you know, being uh, whatever, an influencer, being yeah. famous is yeah. going to be the path that leads you to success, mm -hmm. those are the people that you help. Yes. My philosophy is that everybody has the answers within them. Mm. And I'm not someone who tells people what to do because I believe that the clients that I work with are an expert in themselves. I'm not an expert in you. So what I do is I just help people uncover the answers for themselves. So you've, you've helped me unlock something. What does that give me? It gives you the answers to go ahead and do something because you have answers. You know, if I were to say, for example, that's why I don't work too much in the strategy world. Mm -hmm. 80% maybe strategy and then not 80%, 20% is strategy uh, because you can Google all that stuff. You can Google how to create a YouTube video. You can Google how to start an Instagram account. You can Google everything. You can Google how to start a Shopify store. Uh, but what you can't Google is you can't Google what's going on in your heart. Mm. That's, that's where I tap into. So yes, you're right. A lot of people have answers, but are these answers helping them? I love that. <laughs> you got, they got to tap into the cosmic Google search. You're helping people through it. Mm -hmm. is, is the answer always the same or it's just like, just do it? Like pretty much like just do it uh, or, is it or is it like really nuanced? It's, it's just do it and it's also paired with um, actual exercises that would help them. Because the easy answer is just do it. Right. right. It is really that easy but a lot of people have a tendency of overthinking everything. Um, one of the fun things that actually my boyfriend is going through right now is um, social freedom exercises. This is actually putting yourself in certain situations that mm. you can be judged and ridiculed. Mm. And that's the whole point of it. Um, so one of the fun exercises that he was telling me that he does is like you just go stand at the window and you stare at the person sitting there and just feel the discomfort and how awkward that, that is. There's a lot of people that I work with, and you probably have come across them, so that they, I wanna change the world. I wanna, mm -hmm. I wanna build an impact. Well, if you have a problem just staring at people awkwardly, and you're concerned about being judged, try going against the status quo. That's not gonna work. Hmm. You wanna do something big? People are gonna push back against you? You're not going to be ready for that massive thing if you can't even do this little tiny thing. Like one woman I was working with, she's like, I want to be authentic. I want to, you know, I, she, she's in real estate, so she looks is very important for them, mm -hmm. right? They have to um, look a certain way. And um, they, realtors? Realtors, yeah. They, and, she, and she was from Texas, and like she had perfect hair, perfect makeup, like perfect oh, suit on. Wow. And I'm sitting there in Thailand with my hair tossed up with like a sundress on, right? <laughs> Completely different types of people. And uh, she's like, I, I feel like I'm not authentic. And I feel like if I'm more vulnerable in my business, I'll be able to sell more because I understand that people connect with that better. And then she's like, so teach me, give me a template and how to tell a story. And I'm going to make it into a video. I need a jingle. That was a whole thing. I need a jingle. Mm. And, uh, and then during a conversation, what we ended up coming down to, like she has never walked out of her house without makeup on, mm. ever. I was like, what would happen if you walk out of the house with it? She's like, I'm gonna die. I was like, you're, you're equating walking out of a house without makeup to dying, which means that the fear of judgment is so strong for you that you would rather die than be seen for who you are. Mm. And uh, so I ended up giving her a challenge. I was like, listen, over the weekend, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the supermarket without makeup on. She said, no, never. What if I run into people? I'm like, that's the point. Did, so she did it? She did it. Did anyone notice? She said uh, certain people thought that she looked a little tired, but okay. that was the extent of it. But yeah. she did it. She gave herself the permission that I could show myself for who I am. So it's something so small could help them with really large things. And so people come to you because they want to be able to change the world. They need to be out, out there in the world to change mm -hmm. the world. What are the things that we need to start getting ready for if we want to do this? Just be open. I think the more honest you are, the better. Uh, and, it's, and it cuts down the time, too. Because 
usually the first session is me putting them in a situation that is uncomfortable for them. I may be asking them questions that they have never answered before in their lives. And if they're closed off... Like, give me an example. What's, what's, what's the type of question that you might ask that's really penetrating? One of the things I would say, what's something that you haven't told a lot of people that you would like to share with me? Mm. And that's when that gets people. But then I don't give them the question ahead of time because they become perfectionist about it. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have um, weird things around money. Like I've had clients that I've worked with for six months and then only in the six month mark, I was like, you know what? I'm really bad with money. I need help. Mm -hmm. So I find triggering is money questions. It's really triggering and something that they have never shared with anybody before mm -hmm. is quite triggering. That something that they haven't shared with anybody before is more of a new client thing. And the, the money and, and you know, triggers around that. Or sex questions, which is very triggering too. Yeah, so just like really intimate questions. Yeah. yeah. And it, mm. it's different for everybody. Because mm -hmm. some people are very open about certain things. Right. You know, and then if you're like super open about something, then, I, I mean, everybody has that little thing that they're not hiding, but they're protecting, they're guarding. Yeah. yeah. And so sometimes people use these big open elements to hide Hopefully, you know, if I'm really big here, you won't notice yes. the thing over there. Yes. And yeah. it's something is also what I have learned over the years. In the beginning, I used to always think if someone's crying means I made a break breakthrough, that they're, it's growth mm -hmm. for them. But there are also people who cry all the time. Yeah. Criers. Right. <laughs> right? There are criers out there. Yeah, it's just the way they express So maybe themselves. the biggest growth for them is to, is to pick themselves up and do something scary and take action mm -hmm. towards something they really want. That's growth for them. Crying and opening up for them is something that they always do. It's their default. Mm -hmm. And versus someone who is, who is very much about taking action and they, they hide themselves in just doing things and not really tapping into their inner self, that growth for them would be crying. So mm -hmm. it really depends on what growth is for people. I can't, there's no one size fits all for people. If, um, if confidence is an issue for them, then there are certain practices they can do, mm -hmm. like um, doing some exercises. What are the things that make me feel confident? And then they write it down and they make sure that they do it every single day. So having helped people for years in this, what are the things that are scary to you? Facing myself. Okay. What does that I mean? still do that. What does I that still mean? do that constantly. Facing myself in, in a sense that sometimes when I'm helping other people, I realize I'm like, you know, I gotta deal with this too. Mm. And a, a lot of the times, that's what coaches are like. It's um, they're yelling at themselves a lot of the times. It's like I need to do this. Mm -hmm. So that's the scary part for me. Um, another scary Any part. The imposter syndrome. Sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I do, and uh, I used to have that a lot more when I first started out because I was helping people start their businesses and I was starting my own business mm. and I wasn't making any money. Mm -hmm. So how can I possibly help someone make money when I wasn't doing it? But probably 60% of my time is spent on growing myself because I believe that this is very important for coaches. You can only take people to the level that you're at. You can't take people further than mm -hmm. what you are at. Mm -hmm. So it's important to do the inner work. It's like having an overweight personal trainer yelling you to lose weight. Mm -hmm. They're not working out. Mm -hmm. So that's 60% of my time is spent working out on myself. Because mm -hmm. if you're not doing what you're teaching, um, it gets weird. And I think people sense that. And I think people sense that with me in the beginning. I struggled a lot in the beginning. People wouldn't come back. Even when I was charging like 25 bucks an hour, no one would come back. And I think a lot of it was because I wasn't doing the work and mm. I wasn't practicing what I was preaching. Mm. I would tell people to take leaps of faith and I wouldn't do it. I would do it in a very um, small way that people think it's scary. Like taking a leap of faith, I'm like, oh, I'm just gonna go outside and film. It wasn't growth for me mm. because I'm comfortable with that. What was growth for me is taking a leap of faith and moving to the other side of the world. Mm -hmm. And that's when everything kind of opened up for me. Mm. And people start seeing that. And when people see the shift in you, people start approaching you for help versus you constantly trying to get clients. So that's, that's th those are the, the scary things that I go through is facing myself. Maybe I still have a lot of um, imposter syndrome. Maybe I have jealousy. Maybe, you know, when I open up my Instagram, I'm comparing myself to other coaches and I'm feeling like, why are they doing better? Now, how long does that last? It lasts maybe, 10 seconds, it doesn't last for months, 
Mm -hmm. Whereas like in the past it did. Sure. So it was kind of shortening the time. Sure. At the end of the day, what does it all come down to? Like just, just boil it down for me. Love. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. It's love. It's loving unconditionally. If I could teach people and hold space for people to know that you could be yourself, 100% yourself, I'm not going to judge you for it, and I'm going to love you for it, and your love no matter what, um, I, think, I think my work is done. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.